Welcome to CWH, I'm Mike Salem. This month we have shared about our 45 years of ministry. Today we'll give you a glimpse into our current staff and office here in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Our days begin with devotional time and sorting through our mail. We are grateful for your gifts, notes, and letters to us. The gifts are then entered into our system and processed. From there, our office manager reads every letter and determines if a response is needed. Orders for our products and materials are filled and packaged to be sent out. Our staff loves connecting with our viewers over the phone and often prays with our callers. Our bookkeeper ensures all information is recorded correctly and manages and maintains our records. Our production crew works together to create and produce our hosted programs. Thank you to our staff for your kind and generous hearts and all you do to carry on my dad, Pastor Salem's desire to spread the good news. I'm Pastor Salem and I welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. And uh, we're going to have a sermon today on the book, The World Needs. And uh, so I hope you'll call your friends and I hope you'll tune in and pray for the service. And we'll have a wonderful time worshiping the Lord. But before the sermon, I want to share some of the letters we get because I got, we got some people writing in and they're saying they'd rather have the letters than the sermon. Well, that isn't going to happen. But we will share some of the letters because they uh, let us know where people are. And uh, then uh, we can encourage uh, many, many people may have the same problem. Uh, so our first letter today is from Hamilton, Montana. And this person writes, Thank you for helping me and others to become a reborn Christian. Praise the Lord Jesus. God bless. He's thankful that we brought the gospel, a Christian worship hour, brought the gospel to his residence, and now he's born again, and many others are with him, he says. And so I just want to remind you that your prayers and your gifts make this possible because we couldn't do it alone and you can't do it alone, but together we can send the gospel to all the world to the salvation of many. So thank you for your part in, in this ministry. Here's North Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I live in North Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, I've never been very, very religious, but recently started watching and, and enjoy your show. I've been hearing voices now for years and have turned to alcohol and cigarettes, and your show helps me. Show me the way to the truth and the light. And so here isn't this wonderful, here is, this is a young man, and he's writing in, and he wants to know the way, the truth and the light. And he calls it the light, but, but uh, Jesus said, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so salvation is not through uh, the church. It's not by a church. It's not by circumcision. It's not by baptism. It's not by good works. It's a person. Jesus Christ is the way to God. And when you ask Jesus to come into your heart and take away your sins, he grants that and washes them away, makes them white as snow, writes your name in the Lamb's Book of Life and gives you eternal life. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful Savior. But let's all pray for this young man in British Columbia, Canada. Here's Thief River Falls, Minnesota. And uh, this one person writes, I'm a new and struggling Christian of one year. You brought to me my salvation. Thank you and God for that. And so that's exactly what the Christian worship hour does. We bring salvation, the message of salvation. You know, Paul writes in Romans and he says, call on the name of the Lord and be saved. But how will they call on the name of the Lord if they don't need the Lord? And so somebody has to take the message to them and then preach that word and then they can believe and be saved. But how can we get the word out all over the world? It's no, just impossible. And so uh, for us to do as an individual. And so we have technology now. And we have to pay our way. And when you give your gifts and your prayers, we're sending the gospel all over the world. And here's this dear brother. He's a new Christian and he's struggling. He's struggling because the devil's fighting him. So we pray for him that... God will just bless him and help him not to give up. And we've sent him literature. 
as we do all the new converts and people that write in. So pray for this brother in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. Dallas, Texas. Words cannot express how grateful I am to you for your weekly program that I watch on Daystar. Thank you. I am a single mother who at times experiences severe loneliness and depression, but your program lifts my spirit. Please pray for me. Here's a single mother, and I know a good number of single mothers, and it's tough. But they stay right at it, and they keep those children while some bum is running off in the woods and hiding like a thief. They're staying there at the post and seeing the taking care of the children and it's hard and they get depressed and they get discouraged. And we ought to pray for all the single mothers in the world that God will help them. I know there's many, many of them and help them to take courage. One more letter, Livingston, Montana. I'm writing to asking you to send me the sermon Pastor had on April, Sunday, April the 4th. It brought me to tears. I lost my son and am searching for all the information of Jesus' love for us. I know he has, was perfect of love. Thank you very much. So here's a mother writing in, lost her son, and she wants to know about Jesus and his love. Well, I'm going to tell you, God loves you. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. He died on a cross and shed his blood to pay for our sins. So you just thank, uh, just take, go to Jesus. He'll love you and he'll help you. He'll comfort your heart. God bless you. Now, if you want to write to us, we're going to give the address at the close of the service. So get your pencil and paper and we'll uh, give you that uh, information again at the clo close of the service. Now we want to look at a sermon today on the book The World Needs. And before I launch out into the deep, let me say this. Last Sunday was my 96th birthday, and I got a ton of cards. I just want to thank you for the cards and the gifts and the nice notes and the letters and all of the rest of it. It just made my day. And if I didn't, uh, I would have turned 96 earlier if I'd known I was going to get all that attention. But uh, here it is. It's all history. Thank you. God bless you. Now, this week in the United States, we celebrate Independence Day. And so I'm bringing a very special message to the United States. But I do not want to limit it to the United States, and that's why I say it is the book the whole world needs. The United States leads it, God knows. But the whole world needs this book. And that book is the Bible, the Holy Word of God, the inspired Word of God, there's only one book on earth like that, and it comes right from God as he spoke to holy men of God, and they spoke as they were moved. So yes, the whole world needs the Bible. Listen to some of these people, these world leaders, and they talk about the Bible. George Washington, our first president, says, it is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. John, John Quincy Adams says, So great is my veneration of the Bible that I err that the earlier my children begin to read it, the more confidential I will I be my hope that they will prove useful citizens of their country and respectable members of society. And so he's putting in, giving his children, giving them that Bible to guide and direct. Charles Dickens says, the New Testament is the very best book that ever was or ever will be known in the whole world. Andrew Jackson, that book, sir, is the rock on which our republic rests. And not just the Republic of the United States, but every nation of the world needs that Bible to have a firm foundation and have the guidance of God. Abraham Lincoln wrote, he said, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. All the good from the Savior of the world is communicated to us through this book. And Horace Greeley said, it is impossible to mentally or socially enslave a Bible reading people. The principles of the Bible are the good groundwork of human freedom. And one more, 
Woodrow Wilson said, I ask, ask every man and woman in this audience that from this day on they will realize that part of the destiny of America lies in their daily perusal of this good book. So we need that book. We need that Bible. And uh, God is, uh, is urging us to do it. So every one of these men, uh, uh, world-known men, uh, great men of all ages, uh, they are seeking to endorse the Bible and they're is seeking to have us no, follow the Bible and read the Bible. And so, yes, it is true, the world needs the Bible. And so I want to give some reasons, three reasons why the world needs the Bible. The world needs the Bible, first of all, because the Bible satisfies our longing for God. Man was created for by God in the Garden of Eden, as was Eve. Here we were created with a desire to worship God, and we will never be complete until that desire is, is fulfilled. Every person on the earth wants to worship something, and they can worship the God, great God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or they can worship some idol, or they can worship some money, or they can worship sports, or they can worship a fence post. They can worship anything, but they're going to worship something because we're made that way. We're not complete until that spiritual realm is finished and, and, and supplied, and that is God in our life. And the Bible, the Holy Bible, is the only book that tells us how to find God. Now, we can see God in, as we look in, in, in creation. We see the moon, the stars, and the planets, and, uh, and, uh, and we just can't. You know that there's got to be somebody. If you have a watch, there's got to be a watchmaker. And if there's a star, there's got to be a star maker. And that star maker is the great God Almighty. And when you look at, how, if you look at a little child and how that they were, when, when that child is conceived, it has DNA. It's all DNA. And as a grown person, that DNA is so small, you can't see it with a naked eye. You have to have a microscope. How did that happen? Oh, the evolutionist says it just happened. You know, the, the, I, the, I feel sorry for those poor souls. If they aren't, if, if that isn't about the stupidest thing you can say, that here we have, we have a watch, but we don't have a watchmaker. We have DNA, but we don't have anybody that made it. It just happened. You gotta have more sense than that. I, can, I don't know why it takes far more faith to believe in evolution that it does to believe in the Bible. And so this Bible tells us about God, and it tells us how that Adam and Eve walked with God in the Garden of Eden. They had close fellowship with him. Then that Bible tells us how the Kim's, that the, uh, sin entered in. We call it the fall. And our first parent, parents were driven from the Garden of Eden because they sinned. And But God in his mercy provides a sacrifice so that Adam and Eve can have that fellowship restored. And so we're reading in Genesis 3:21. Unto Adam also and unto his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins, and he clothed them. And that's a picture of the gospel, how man loses his fellowship with God. He's dead in his sins, and he's broken from God. And how God provides a sacrifice. He doesn't make all the religions of the world. You have to bring your sacrifice to your God or your little old thing, whatever you worship. But in the Christianity, it's just wonderful. God brings a sacrifice. And it isn't some cheap thing that he picked up. He gave his only begotten son to come and die for our sins. What a wonderful, wonderful Savior we have. And so it talks about that. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, for as Adam all, in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And that is, we all fell with Adam. And when we accept Jesus Christ, we're made alive. But we're never made alive until we ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart and take away our sins and wash away our sins. And, uh, and everybody has to make that decision. Everybody personally has to ask. Jesus says that him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. He tells us again, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And so we, everyone has to make that decision for Christ, except, except the little babies. 
and the little children who don't know the message, how to, aren't come to, haven't come to the age of accountability. And so all of them belong to God, whether they've been baptized or not, they belong to God and they go to be with God. Matthew 19, 14, you remember the story how the Jesus is there and he's working with his disciples and, of the, uh, and some of the parents bring their little children and they want him to bless, want Jesus to bless them, not baptize them because John says he never, Jesus never baptized anybody, but he wanted to bless them, to put his hands on them and bless them. And the disciple says, Jesus is too busy for the kids. Get, keep him back. And when Jesus said that, he was much displeased. And he said, allow those little children to come unto me and listen to what he said. He said, allow those little children to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of heaven. They're all a part of my kingdom. And all of those million aborted little babies are sound in heaven, safe in heaven, because they're a part of his kingdom. But once you come to that age when you can make a decision and you decide not to accept Jesus, you decide you're going to make your own way, then it all rests upon you and God have mercy on your soul if you don't have Jesus. So the Bible tells us the whole story of sin and how you can deal with sin, come to Jesus. And then the second thing the Bible gives us comfort in time of trials. You haven't lived in this world, world very long and you cried over something. You had your heart break over something. There's troubles and trials every way you turn and it's found in the church, when, in the most persecuted church especially, where they are persecuted, they're put to death because they stand up for Jesus Christ and the little children see the parents die and the homes are broken up and everything is disrupted and there's sorrow and there's trouble. And Jesus told us that. He said, listen, if you're going to be my follower, there's going to be troubles and trials that you're going to have to face. He tells us in John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19, if the world hate you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are in the world, the world will love his own. But because you're not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. And so Jesus tells us they're going to hate you and they're going to fight you every turn of the road. And that's exactly what happens. And but I want, and Jesus tells us, if for instance, in John 16, 33, he says, you take heart now. Don't you become discouraged. And this is what he said. These things have I spoken unto you that you might have peace. And the world you shall have tribulation. That's what Jesus said. In the world you're going to have tribulation. In this society, this godless society, where Satan is the prince of the power of the air, he's the arch enemy of Jesus Christ. And if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you have the devil's looks to you as an enemy and he's going to torture you and tempt you and try to get you to turn away and denounce God and go your own way, even though you'll always be his child. But God says, Jesus says, don't be of, don't be of discouragement. Don't be of worry because uh, I, have, I have eternal life and I can, you can trust in me and find eternal life. And so if you're an unbeliever and you've never accepted Jesus as your savior, I want to tell you a little, I want to tell you something, friend. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you. He has said, if you have many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to those who believed on his name. You say, how do, how do I come to him? You come to him by saying, dear Jesus. Just talk to him in your own words, dear Jesus. I'm, I've sinned against you and I'm sorry. And I ask you to come into my heart and take away my sins. And I'll turn from my sins the best I can. And I'll follow you as my dear Savior. And uh, thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. If you pray that, you have eternal life. And so this wonderful Savior, <laughs> he, that goes out to all the world. And that's why I love to preach. I just love to preach because I have a good message. There isn't anybody that has sinned so bad that you can't be saved. And I, I get letters all the time and people talk to me. I've been in this work preaching the gospel for 73 years, starting 74, praise God. 
And I haven't preached very well, but I preach the message of God. I preach the Bible so they're good messages because the, uh, the Bible is where the power is. And when I preach the word of God, when I preach the Bible, I preach with authority. And I can say, this is the way it is and no other way, period. And I had an old professor in my seminary, Robert L. Moyer, God bless him. I can't wait to see him again. And he always would tell us, when God puts a period, don't you put a question mark. And so I can say, this is what God says. And what does he say? The Bible tells us what he says. It says, for instance, in John 3, 36, he that believeth on the Son hath life. He that believeth not the Son shall not have life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Just that simple. It all rests upon Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, you want to go to heaven? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to heaven, to, no man goes to the Father, but by me. Salvation is a person. Jesus Christ who is dead and is raised from the dead and will live forever because he is God. He's not only the son of God, he is God. Make that prayer and become his child. And then the final thing I put down is the Bible takes away the fear of death. Boy, we got a lot of people that are afraid to die. They don't want to talk about death. They don't want to think about death. They don't want you to preach about death. They're just deathly afraid of death. And I know one man, he doesn't, won't even make a will because he doesn't want to think about death. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's going to come. You're going to meet it somewhere, someplace. And when you meet death, it just simply means that you leave, your spirit goes into that other world and it goes into heaven or it goes into hell. And if you're trusting in Jesus Christ and you're believing in Jesus Christ and receive Jesus Christ, it's going to heaven. And if you don't receive Jesus Christ, it's going to hell. That's all. John 3, third chapter in the 36th verse. Jesus told us that. So God bless you. Come to the Bible. So when it comes to the Bible, they don't like to listen to the Bible. For instance, the Bible says in, John, in Matthew 9, 27, it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. That is, you're going to be judged. You're going to, and the judge is going to be Jesus Christ. He's going to be on his throne. And he's going to judge if we received him in our heart or if we haven't. And if we have received him, we can enter into the joy of the Lord. And if we haven't received him, we go where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's what Jesus said. Face it. Look at it, because the Bible takes away the fear of death. And so you don't have to fear because but what, this is what Paul said. Philippians 1, 21, St. Paul said, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain, gain, great gain. And so praise the Lord. You just come to Jesus and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you have everlasting life. You don't need to be afraid. I read about a recently read about a young man who completed seminary. He was serving in his first church and he loved his people and his people loved him. And one day, one of his members who was in the hospital was in the hospital and he went to see her, to visit her. And before he went into the room, he asked the nurse, is she resting comfortably? And the nurse responded, no. We believe she has only a few hours to live. Now, the young pastor had never called on a dying person. He didn't know what to say, and he didn't know what to do. He was visibly shaken. And so when he went into the room, the saintly old lady noticed the young man's fear. She could see that he didn't know what to say and how to react to it. And in her kind, sweetly way, she said, Son, there's nothing to be scared about. I'm going to cross over Jordan, and my father owns both sides of the river. Either side is just fine with me. Live or die, I am his. And she had no fear. How, do you, how are you doing today, friend? Are you afraid to death? You don't know what you're going to do when it comes. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to come to Jesus. 
And he says, him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. And he says, bring all of your sins to me and I'll forgive all your sins. And he says, though they be red like crimson, come unto me, he said, and behold, I says, I'm, I'm, I will take away your sins. And though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, Jesus said. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be together. They shall be as white as snow, they, all washed away, pure as it can be. And so when you come to Jesus, you maybe have a lot of sins. You may be afraid of death. And he says, now what I'll do, I'll walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. And that's what David said. I'm not afraid of death. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not afraid. And how come, David? Because Jesus is with me. Jesus is with me. Now, if you've accepted Jesus, you write to us. The Christian Worship Hour. And the box is 2002. We're in Aberdeen, South Dakota. And when you write to us, maybe you can send us a gift to help us. And what you need to do is say, I do, is this a service that God wants? And if he says, yes, I want you to support this, you ask him how much and you send it to us. You send it to the Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And you don't need to worry about how your money is spent because we're a member of the International Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. Our books are audited on what we get and how we spend it, and we're as clean as a hound's tooth. So you write to us, you the people on shortwave, Box 2002, let's put it on the screen, 2002, and it's in Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And if you want to get us, you can get us on christianworshiphour.com. But we need to hear from you, my dear friends. And you know, we need your prayers. We need your gifts. And so now we're going to pray for you, all of you gathered around all the world worshiping. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the dear Savior. And we just pray that the, of those who received you, that you'll just help them to lean on your word and know that they're safe. We pray for the young people, Lord, who have a lot of temptations and trials. We pray for the ages and the shut-ins and the, those who can't get around. Help them to know that you said Lord, that you would be them. No, no, you would never leave them or forsake them. So just bless them. And dear Lord, help us to just always love you and serve you, rejoicing in the wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ, who's given us the book that the whole world needs. Thank you in Jesus' name. So now until next week, we're going to be looking for that letter. And uh, you pray for us and we'll pray for you. And next week, we're going to be thinking again, looking at this wonderful Savior who has said to come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, come to Jesus. And if you're not a Christian, he'll give you comfort and help. And if you are a Christian and a believer, he'll put his arms around you and hold you and you won't be afraid of anything, not even death. God bless you, everyone.